just absolutely thrown out the window. The DPI come appropriately dressed for when they're handling this frippinol. And what measures are taken for their safety? Well, they're supposed to be gloved and all that. They say that they come in appropriate gear that is going to protect them from the fipronil, which is good because a lot of these guys are family men and they don't deserve to be poisoned, even if they're killing everyone's food. They're doing it to put food on their table, but at the same time, they're also destroying the food system so they won't have food to be put on the table. I don't, I don't get it, but you know, maybe in the future they'll understand what they did wrong. Have the DPI done research into the insects and animals that are going to be destroyed or hurt by this fipronil? By the looks of it, they probably would know, but it doesn't seem like they take that into account. And by plenty of research online and plenty of evidence, it is a factor that this fipronil is going to absolutely devastate our native population and our pollinators. Now we're on to the funding part. This gets interesting. Who is funding the DPI Varroa mite response team? There is 16 bodies funding 20% of the response, and then you've got the Commonwealth funding the rest of it. It also looks like the people that are funding this are pretty heavily into the commercial side of all things, like the almond growers and the fruit orchards. Even some genetically modified seed companies are getting in on the action. Interesting because bees don't like genetically modified organisms, especially seeds. It's toxic for them. So let's get it right. The big people are paying the DPI to kill the little people's bees. So you are relying on the mainstream fruit and food, and then they're going to have a shortage because you can already see they have that written down because there's not going to be enough pollinators. And then all your prices are going to start shooting up through the roof for all your mainstream vegetables and fruits. Yeah, that's, good. that's pretty screwed up, I reckon. Who is all the DPI funding bodies? They have a lot. You can go online, search them up. I'll put some right here. Yep. That's a lot. Who is funding the research for the viral mite response? And that is still the same lot of people. It's also a pre-agreed on limit that the Commonwealth came up with because they've been planning for this for a while by the looks of it. What is the full name and the expertise of these DPI agents that are running this whole entire show? Who are these guys that are constructing this management plan? We don't know all of them, but we do know a couple. Um, you will have to search the names up because I'm not going to particularly put them on a video um, and target them, but they do have their names on the website. And you can see that even these commercial farmers are also massive decision makers in this whole entire process. And people that have had one beehive and come from another country of Varalmite and they're experts in it. You know, people that have studied it or never owned beehives, there's a lot of very, very interesting uh, people that are running this whole entire shit show. Who is conducting the research for the viral mite response? And that's a good question. And by the looks of it, it's the DPI labs. Um, that's all we really got from it is, you know, they get all their research and all the, all the labs test for everything. We do not know who is really doing the research behind all of this. What lab slash company is a DPI using to conduct all this research? And like I just said, it is a DPI labs. They're using their own labs to do this research. They're doing all the testing so they can keep it all confined and not let anyone know what is going on. Who makes a final assessment that the hive is infected by varroa mite? That is a lab. The test goes to the lab and then they go, you have varroa mite or you don't have varroa mite. And then they come and kill your hive. Except if you're in the red zone, they're just going to kill your hive. They do not care. They do not test. Who is signing off on the destruction of these hives? Well, the Commonwealth. They're responsible. They're paying. They give the power and grant the power to the DPI. Humane. We're on to this section now. Wouldn't Australia benefit more from finding a solution to deal with these infected hives and not just outright killing all the uninfected hives and the infected hives and not caring at all? While they believe that the varroa mite is the most deadly thing they've had in the country and it's so deadly it's going to wipe out all the bees, even though it takes two years untreated to knock out a hive. So by their eyes, no, Australia would not benefit by everyone producing their own fruit, looking for management methods and you know, not killing hives that are in the middle of nowhere. But Australia will benefit from poisoning the native species and poisoning all the feral hives and outright killing a massive population of bees, especially when 45% of registered hives are in New South Wales. And they get shipped overseas for pollinating seasons. Not just Australia that's been affected here. It's going to be the world. Is it inhumane that the bees are going to be sent to the red zone in Coffs Harbour to pollinate the blueberry farms and then be killed afterwards? 
Now that was the case by the looks of it, but now it's not going to be the case. They just get a free pass. They're allowed their bees there. But the real question is when they start spraying their insecticides, they're actually going to have to take the bees off the property. So they really do get a free pass. The killing of the bees. Why have the DPI resorted to using petrol to kill these absolutely healthy and gorgeous hives? They're gassing these poor animals. Slowly and torturous, you can hear it. When they pour the petrol into your hive, you can hear those poor animals screaming. And have they done research into more humane methods? Like the gases, like different actual methods, like maybe not killing the damn hives that are just perfectly doing their own thing in the middle of nowhere. And the answer is, no, the petrol is the most humane method. They're originally burning the hives with petrol in them, and now they just prefer to pour petrol in them. It's the most humane method they can use. Is it humane to kill these hives and then let the poor bees that are outside fly around and then die? Because once the bees have no hive and it's been wrapped up or taken away, these bees will fly around, fly around, fly around, and then die. They have no food, they have no home. What else is gonna happen to them? And we've witnessed it. Once all of our hives were slaughtered and taken away, they literally had, we, we literally had hundreds of bees everywhere absolutely everywhere just flying around and then we come down a week later and there's just carcasses everywhere over the concrete over the lids that were left behind there is bodies everywhere hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these bees that had to suffer because their home got taken away and their response is we do it at night so it's more humane and we get more bees to stay in the hive and we can kill them all in one go and there won't be any left outside no oh, that that's not the case because there's something called bee hotels, there's bee bricks, all these things that people promote to help the bees. You're probably wondering, what is a bee hotel? What's a bee brick? They're these beautiful constructions that normally have hollow outs and that is where a bee will rest at night. As soon as it's dark, a bee can't fly, it can't get home. So it has to find a hollow out to stay in and that's where they stay. So all those bees that left their hive, did their little journey, and it got dark and they've rested for the night. They're coming back home to no hive. Who gave the authority to the DPI to kill all of our bees? It was the Commonwealth. They did it. They acted it. Look at it. It's absolutely top of the law, the act they put on this. This is just an emergency biosecurity act. You can't break it with as much force as you can. Like, it's the people that need to stand up that need to break it. Because I'm telling you, they've got this thing just looping around each other and basically giving us no right. Why does the DPI allow you to destroy your hives if there is under 10 of them? And is this inconsistency a risk of spreading the viral mite? Now we had viral mite found apparently far away. Now they only just killed the two hives that were on that road that weren't infected with viral mite. The only other people that were on that road with hives a week ago, they killed our hives a month and a half ago. We're in the middle of nowhere, nowhere near it. But, you know, that's the importance of it. And they say, oh, it has to be done, you know, and if the people want it done, we'll come in and do it. But other than that, you know, they're going to supply you with the stuff to pour petrol into your own hives and then they'll take it away for you or you can burn it yourself. But I mean, the inconsistency, if they were so worried about the bromite, they would have consistently killed all the hives around the area. But there were so many cases of 10 hives left over here, five hives left over here, three hives left over here, all in red zones that were here for six months ago. And then they come and kill new areas. They're just absolutely bonkers, these guys.